Hi, I'm Daz from Computer Water Calling Store, DazMod.com, and this is my video as a follow-up for my complete water cooling guide part 7. I got some feedback that I'm too shallow, not enough details, oversimplify things, so people want more details. So, yeah, fitting is a big subject, there's probably 300 of them, um, lots of possibilities, so I covered uh, the main basics in my 15 minutes. And I think that's enough for beginners, but we can look into more details, no problem. You ask, I deliver. Well, no issues from me. Anyways, so we already established one thing. To make any kind of build you fancy, straight barb or straight compression fittings will do it. All you need, then you have a tight situation or really weird tube routing, you just use more tube and you basically can do whatever you want. It's not an issue, okay? But if you'd like to create a really neat setup or certain way how it looks and there are no end to perfection as you know, well, there's a few type of fittings that help you to, to achieve this target. So, and we already discussed in my first video that the first thing you need to look is a fitting that angled. In this case, it helps you to make tube routing much nicer. Like here on a CPU block, I would say it's probably the best case scenario Then you use a 245 degrees fittings because you put one in the direction of your reservoir or your, let's say, uh, radiator and other one let's go, goes to GPU block. So, so angle fitting definitely helps because CPU block is parallel to a motherboard. Everything else usually in 90 degree direction so you have to bend anyway so this is one type but the very next improvement after using angled fittings I would tell you that um, the next best, best thing you should to look at is a, is a rotary what is a rotary is is, is a additional component to your fittings that allow fitting to rotate 160 degrees on around itself why it's great? It's because when you start assembling your system, it's actually much easier to do that. So you touch one tube and you see it's turning as you wish. So after that you cut it, you measure, you cut it uh, in a convenient direction, then you put it in the right position back and you attach to the your other fittings and then you even can adjust it a little bit. So this is much easier to achieve proper look when you use rotaries. Also, rotaries is handful, for example, if you run, let's say, a uh, draining pipe from the bottom of your reservoir and uh, <coughs> you have a rotor in, uh, on it, let's, let's imagine that's what we have here. So, you can turn tube and drain the system outside of the case, when you don't use it, you can turn it around and hide it, right? So, the rotary is helpful in many cases. And Another example could be when you need to partially disassemble your system to, to access something, right? So through the rotary you don't need to excessively to twist your tubing because everything turning so much easier to work with. So it's definitely something that is um, very nice to have in your system in certain places. And obviously adds to the cost of the this kind of fitting that rotary is attached to. But it's, it's a good idea to have a few. Uh, one thing is about rotaries, because, because of their construction, it, it, it has one part and has a rotary part and some rubber washer inside of that and, they, and the thing actually need to move. So they usually <coughs> um, sensitive to side tension. So if you do like really push hard in that direction, so you can squish uh, rubber inside hard enough so the water can get out. So when you use rotaries, try not to have excessive side force through the very tight tube runs or something like this. So uh, it doesn't happen when you do a little bit tension, but when you pull hard, it can start leaking. Not much, but a little bit, right? So when you use rotaries, make sure that your tubes runs are nice and uh, you don't pull too hard, then it will work, okay? So this is the first type, 
that I suggest to you. After you pick up your angled fittings and your straight fittings, look where the rotaries might be uh, helpful. And the rotary part can be attached to anything. The rotary can be on a straight fitting or angled fitting, on adapters, name it. So it just it ex, um, improvement over over whatever design you you're talking about. Okay. So another helpful component that I'd like to discuss to you is uh, is a cross connect. Cross connect is usually fitting with uh, multiple holes in it. So you see this is like quad, basically just a little square which drilled in two directions. But that allows you to do things uh, like uh, split your flow or for example if you would like to have something like this. You see on the bottom I have a um, thermal probe put into one of the entrances of this cross connect and this is my water flow I'll just go direct through. So it doesn't really uh, <coughs> affect my flow but I have opportunity to put my thermal probe in so I can can use it for my lab test right so this is one of the examples how you do that or uh, you can have a your flow go through and this is could be your drain tube so there's lots of possibilities when you need actually to split uh, your water parts for whatever reason and there's a few designs of those um, this is square one which is from coolants or Beats Power Enzotech they make those like kind of roundish ones and uh, and you have a holes around it. It can be can be all four, or they make sometimes make it like L shape when you have only two holes or three, like T uh, shape, and so on and so forth. So this is another thing that quite often used uh, in water cooling build for this kind of splitting situations when you need to do that. Next type of fittings that I think that um, worthwhile to mention is a uh, drain port or fuel port. There's uh, two kinds of those. So why you need them? Usually how, how you fill the system? You need some kind of pipe uh, or tube that you actually put water in or you drain water out. So there's uh, two kinds of them. One is called fuel port and it looks like this and another one called a stop plug. It looks like this. They're very similar but what's the difference? Fill port usually you put on on a case, so it's uh, it's either has a threads or threads with thread with a, a fixation cup. So you basically put it on a hole on top of your case, but because it's a bigger, it will sit on top of your case. You fix it with a cup thing like that. Uh, add barb because usually barb portion or compression fitting portion not included, and you attach your tube. And so you have actual uh, access to your, to your computer system outside of your case. So everything closed, but you can put water here or drain it. And so they usually fill port on the top of the case and drain on the side or whatever. Whatever works. Okay? Uh, the stop plug is a little bit more simple. It's not designed to be used on uh, outside of the case like, like this fill port. You just hide it inside somewhere and all, all it does is just you attach it to a piece of tube and you have a stop plug on it. So when you need to drain, you just unscrew it, you know, put water out and that's it. So those two serve different purpose. Uh, fill ports, usually sometimes more expensive, but basically they are the same price. So you just select what kind of design you use and that determines what kind of thing you need. So between those two. Well, next time of fitting that's worthwhile to mention is uh, SLI or crossfire kits. Let's say you have uh, multiple blocks. I have only one here to make you example, but nevertheless. Let's say you have two video cards. How you connect uh, two video cards together? The, the s space between two is very little. So you can't use normal fittings because they will be too much. So one probably will take all space you have between cards. So the question is what to do? So you have a special set of um, relatively small fittings um, that called SLI across fire kits. Uh, usually it consists of two nuts with a rubber inside and connection pipe. This little connection pipe for the cards when they just next to each other and usually you, in, in the same set usually you have three sizes. A little bit bigger pipe 
when you skip one slot and the biggest pipe when you actually skip two slots it's like slot one two three four and four this is this one right and this is slot one and three and for the little one obviously four slot one and two so what you have you have your video card with a block attached to it you put this little a little screw on one card same thing you put another card and you run this little tube between them and that's how it works and it's uh, it's rubberized and give you an opportunity to change, have a flexible um, distance between cards okay one important thing is when you use your SLA connections you don't put card first and then trying to force your tube in you assemble everything both cards two three four and then you install them that's important because I have people who are breaking those um, nuts because they, they put cards first trying to put f the tube between them the best case scenario you broke break SLA keys worst case scenario you break uh, your PCIe slot which is not very nice because motherboard is more expensive okay next type of the fittings they're running very fast is a quiz disconnect quiz disconnect is for something that you let's say you'd like to take one component out without draining all water so quick disconnects typically look like like this one there's two pieces one female one male so you can twist them disconnect and then they basically lock water parts on each sizes and uh, no water spills so you have component which has those disconnects attached to that take it out from the system for example you can have two of those running towards CPU and if you for example when I do CPU roundup test obviously <laughs> I'm lazy to drain it every time and feel water because it takes time bleeding all the stuff right so basically I just use two of those uh, which goes to my CPU block like this and uh, <clears throat> so all I need I just disconnect my CPU block both pipes from the entire system and uh, take block out very fast so you can take other block and it speed up the process of the testing uh, quick disconnect get a bit awkward um, I would say I, I don't really uh, use them much except when I have to uh, they're a little bit restrained flow and uh, they're awkward to put on so we need to press and twist so this is a uh, coolant one so they never actually was a very popular product so um, if you have to use it or you have a situation when you really will benefit from ability to disconnect components for whatever reason you you after that's great you can use those they're relatively expensive but people use them for certain builds and definitely it works there's something I'd like to show you that coming in the market 2011 and much nicer uh, type of quick disconnect um, it's not available yet but I show you that comparing with this one from coolants you need to like press it and twist it and actually you need to know which direction you twist it let me see um, okay I press on it twist it out very awkward I never like this so what's happened with this new type of fittings that come in quick disconnect all you need you slide the um, one of the metal rings out and spring push the second thing out so the disconnection of this one can be done with one hand pretty powerful and uh, so this the same idea male unit female unit and male unit goes into male unit and you have your flow easy so this probably will be really good thing this kind of I would consider to use but I don't know when we get them in our store but much nicer design super European engineering all I can tell you anyways so what else left uh, we covered SLI oh yes the last type I would like to tell you would be spacers sometimes um, let's say your tube connection 
is too close to motherboard or whatever component and you really need to get it away from something so what you use is you use naturally spacer things spacer is just a little bit piece of tubes that has male female connection both ends so what you do you just put it on and tada you all thing went up a little bit and they're coming in different sizes all you need to know how much you need you have like five millimeters even two millimeters actually five ten whatever the biggest i heard is a uh, five fifty millimeters so this is a uh, i think 20 or something like this so <clears throat> those things allows you to uh, try to move your tubing away if you need to so um, speaking about fittings i think that more than enough to give you a little bit information over so, okay guys i appreciate your feedback whatever you don't like write to me i'll make better video or try to address whatever you're suggesting um, so don't be shy and give me your feedback thanks a lot